Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez recently uh, you know, sort of came clean with her fans about the experience of being there in the Capitol when the violence was happening, coming so close to this mob of people who probably to a man or a woman would have loved to have seen her die. And uh, for a lot of people that sparked quite a bit of empathy for the Congresswoman, but not for everybody, not for Tucker Carlson. Here's how what he had to say. As if you needed more evidence that it's all about what's good for Sandy Cortez and her friends, and not about what's good for you because nobody cares about that. Watch her new position, her revised position on defunding the police. This is from the other day. Many of us um, nearly and narrowly escaped death. There were members of Capitol Police um, who were quite heroic. You know, we have um, many officers, um, and you know, there was a. <clears throat> There were also black and brown officers um, that were confronting white supremacists and putting themselves not just to protect members, but they put themselves in harm's way. Narrowly escaped death. When the most harrowing thing you've done in life is pass freshman sociology at Boston University, every day is a brand new drama. Sandy's heart is still beating fast. But she likes the cops now, despite the fact they're white supremacists. What a difference a day makes. Okay, so I made clear what I thought about this in the damage report this morning. I'll have more to say, but I wanted to let both of you get in. Uh, that, that is a multimillionaire cable host with a massive audience who did a whole segment about how she shouldn't have felt afraid and it's laughable that she did. I, this is somebody who when protesters showed up to his house and knocked on his door, uh, delved into hysterics in response, Tucker Carlson, and lied to his audience saying that they broke his door. And when reporters just fact checked and checked police reports, no, there was no instance of property damage. There was no, uh, there was no uh, events as described by Tucker. It was, it was pure sensationalism, pure hysterics uh, from like you say, a, a pampered multimillionaire. It's, it's, uh, it's unconscionable to act like they are unjustified in, in being upset or traumatized by what happened. They were in a building with you know spotty information, learning of horrific new developments like panic buttons being removed, having their fellow members tweet out locations of, of significant members of Congress or important members of Congress. Um, and what I can imagine they were, they were thinking is these people wanna kill us. This is, as you've said before the program, John, this is, uh, these are people who people like Tucker and other Fox hosts, have wanted, uh, have inspired their audience uh, to want to kill. People, there have been instances of attempted violence by Fox viewers because of people they just saw repeatedly on Fox. If you remember the MAGA bomber who was mailing mm -hmm. bombs to prominent Democrats, he was going off of uh, Fox you know, targets, including Robert De Niro. There was no real connection to Democratic uh, power and, and Robert De Niro. It was just that he had insulted Trump and Fox made a spectacle of it. His own lawyers argued in court that that guy's day revolved around Fox programming and consuming Fox programming. So Tucker knows how they fed into this, and he knows the actual consequences, and he's downplaying, and it's it's very cruel. Yeah. Ken, thoughts? Yeah, well, I cover national security, and so I you know talked to a lot of folks in the law enforcement intelligence community. I can tell you. Um, that's what they thought as well. They thought that there was, you know, a uh, mortal danger to, uh, you know, officials in Congress. And so I would say, um, you know, are you saying that they're crazy too, to, you know, overstate this? I mean, uh, I'm not psychic. I can't kind of uh, project what would have happened if they got there. But um, that's the point of view of officials and experts. And uh, and that's why they moved them to secure locations. So um, I don't know, it's just ridiculous. But I also want to point out, I think it's funny that um, uh, Tucker is, what would he say? What was the barb he said? Um, she she's a she said sociology in Boston University. This was the guy he wore a bow tie until like a few years ago. Have we all forgotten yeah. that? That was what he was, you know. Like you said, he's like this uh, effete intellectual uh, millionaire guy that uh, it, that he spends every one of these uh, uh, episodes of the show decrying. You know, it's ridiculous how 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 much he's trying to distance himself from that. Yeah, and I love that. Like. You know, if they need to, they'll say, "Oh, look at her. She was just a bartender. She just did jobs like that." Now it's, right, right, "I need right. her to just <laughs> be a student." Tucker Carlson is insanely wealthy. Did you know he doesn't have creases in his palms because he's never had to pick up anything? Like <laughs> the him mocking 
anyone for their life experience is just well, it would be comical if it wasn't so disgusting. That that's literally that wasn't Alex Jones. You know, this right. is this is the big guy at Fox News who did a segment about how a congresswoman we should mock her because she's afraid that she nearly died. But but just part of his you know attempt to bamboozle his audience about what happened there. He also said it was not an act of racism, it was not an insurrection. It wasn't an armed invasion by a brigade of dangerous white supremacists, it wasn't. Those are lies. And he, by the way, might, you know, like he's obviously a little bit concerned about, you know, calls going around about how, how much culpability people have for spreading election misinformation. Fox spread hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times. Come up with any conspiracy theory you want. They'll have a Dominion machine here, they'll have a shadowy figure talking through a voice modulator over there. And Tucker Carlson was engaged in that too. He was a little bit distracted by all the vaccine related misinformation he was spreading, but he did spread some around the election. He said no reasonable person thinks that it was a fair election. But anyway, in case you're just coming into this, the US, the, the representatives for the US say that Capitol rioters meant to capture and assassinate officials. We found out earlier today from the Washington Post that about one minute after Mike Pence was hustled out of the chamber, a group charged up the stairs to a second floor landing in the Senate, chasing a, police, a Capitol police officer who drew them away from the Senate. They were within a minute of getting Mike Pence. So this wasn't just a thing where they were going for the Democrats. They were gladly going for Mike Pence too, and it was very close. The whole thing is just so disgusting, and it's even more disgusting to know that not only will there be no consequences, just as there were no consequences after a year of Tucker Carlson telling people to not worry about the pandemic as hundreds of thousands of people died. But his role at Fox News has actually been expanded. They now cover his content in the morning shows. He's being put in charge of more of their news side, making ever more money as he is spreading just hatred and conspiracy theories and filth. And maintaining all the while this facade that he's some sort of, that he's a different sort of Republican, that he's a populist, that we should consider working with him honestly. The whole thing is just disgusting. It's disingenuous. I mean, Tucker's, he's shrewd. He's not, he's not moron completely he's racist and he's bigoted but like he he can see where the winds are blowing and he picks up on the populist trends and tries to speak to it so i think that hoodwinks some more um i don't know gullible uh lefty thinkers especially when it comes to like antitrust but he's by no means sincere his populism ultimately puts uh, people of color, women, marginalized groups, immigrants, etc., on the front lines. Like those are the first people to go in Tucker's populist utopia. Uh, and I also want to point like, that that line that line you put up on the screen in the graphic. Every aspect of that was false. It was like every single thing is 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 provably false. They were armed, like as you said, they wanted to kill. They wanted to kill people. Uh, it was it was an insurrection, and there were white supremacists and white nationalists embedded in the group. You saw a guy with a camp. Auschwitz hoodie in the crowd. Mm -hmm. There were there were fringe white nationalist elements in this crowd. To act like this was just some uh, purely uh, cons concerned citizen uh, activist brigade who just got a little too rambunctious is purely insincere. But it, it is it is Tucker's mo. That's how he operates. Yeah. They beat a cop to death. He's not going to engage with it. He's a complete yeah. fraud. He's a complete and utter fraud. Anyway, sorry, Ken. Last thoughts on this? I was just going to add, beat a cop to death with a Blue Lives Matter flag in view of the camera. I mean, I can't think of anything that embodies more the uh, just bundle of contradictions at work in this kind of a movement than than that than that um, harrowing image. Thanks for watching the Young Turks. I really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all of that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.